Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Polyester here, and with a clock ticking down until the release of that Resident Evil chapter of Dead by Daylight. Heck, it might even be out now already by the time you see the notification for this video, depending on how kind the YouTube algorithm has been to me. Well, we got some confirmation yesterday of what we had suspected would be the legendary skins for the survivors in this Resident Evil chapter. But before I talk about who the legendary skins are gonna be, I just wanna do a little bit of an overview and talk about some of the tweaks that we saw in the PTB for legendary skins and the rumors of some more things that are to come to enhance the experience of these legendary skins. So we're gonna go into game here and I'm gonna turn on these game sounds. So as it stands right now, so this is Lisa Garland. This is uh, a legendary skin that you can use on uh, um, Cheryl Mason. So Cheryl Mason is the survivor that you get with the chapter. If you're not familiar with the legendary skin, when you purchase a legendary skin, it allows you to transform the character into a completely different person from that franchise. So for example, for Cheryl, you can change her into Lisa Garland or Sybil Bennett. Now, um, the way it had been so far in the game is, you know how you're playing the game and on the left hand side here, you would see the character profiles of the survivors. So even if you were playing as uh, Sybil or Lisa, over here on the left hand side in game, it would have a character portrait of Cheryl's face, which makes it a little confusing for people to figure out who is who. And as they are gonna add more of these legendary skins into the game, it just makes more sense to have that clarity of who is who. So if there's a Lisa in the game, you're gonna see Lisa's picture in the HUD on the left-hand side. And similarly, over here on the, on the right-hand side, where we talk about the player level, you can see it says level 50 Cheryl Mason, even though this is Lisa and this is Sybil. Um, in the future, going forward, as soon as tomorrow, hopefully, they will change the names of these characters to reflect who you are playing as, who you are logged in as. And uh, we did see that in the PTB, so I'm confident that that's going to happen tomorrow. Now, what the data miners have said is that they're going to take this even a step further and that um, they're going to change the portraits and backstory and biography information for all these characters as well. So that would mean that when I'm loaded in here on Sybil, if I click this character info page, then this portrait here, well, my camera's blocking a little bit, but this portrait here would change to Sybil. This would say Sybil's name here, and she would have her own backstory here for her biography. Same thing when you were playing as Lisa, it would have Lisa's portrait, her backstory, which I think is very interesting. Considering what we pay for um, these legendary skins where the cost of, a, of this skin is more than the cost of an entire chapter, I do think that that is a nice, uh, the least they can do to tweak this experience for us and um, give us that additional information. Now, this is Jonathan Byers, and I know many of you are like, ah, right now. But this skin is currently disabled unless you bought it like on day one because of the way, well, they said it was technical issues, but let's face it, technically he ugly. That, that's the technical issue, right? So I'm told that here in the lobby, the reason that he looks like this is because Steve's facial animations are applied to him and in the PTB, he won't look like this in the lobby. He looks much better in the game. I don't have any problems with the way Jonathan Byers looks in the game for this Steve Harrington uh, legendary. Hopefully tomorrow um, it's gonna look great and there won't be any more complaints. So again, similarly, instead of Steve Harrington, it'll say Jonathan Byers in here. And then when you hit that character info, it'll have, instead of Steve's picture here on the left, it should have Jonathan's picture and Jonathan's backstory. That's what the data miners have told us. I know for sure that it's gonna say the name of the character underneath your player level and that in the in-game HUD, uh, they'll have their own portrait. So I, I do believe the rest of it's coming, but that's not official information. So take all that with a grain of salt. What I am wondering, however, is will the killers also get their own backstory? I 
think so. It makes sense. Like you would want to see, you know, a trapper info here would change to Krampus. I'd be very, very interested to read a Krampus bio. And then we have, um, what was the next one that came out? The Minotaur for the Oni. We had that one. So instead of Oni, I guess it would say Minotaur. Like that's what the skin's called, right? Yeah, the Minotaur for Greek legend. So hopefully it would say Minotaur. And then we have those, um, those three Crypt TV skins that we got too, right? Which was the, the look-see for the Doctor from Crypt TV. So that'd be cool to check their character info and have it say look-see and have their background info. And then we had Mordeo from Crypt TV for the Huntress. And then finally, um, the Hag, we had the Birch. So that'd be nice to see if they do go forward with all this backstory information. Um, as I said, I do think for the price of these skins being more than the price of a chapter, that whatever they can do to enhance the experience would be welcome. I've often said that I would love to see separate voicing um, to make them stand out from the regular character and even perhaps separate animations but i don't know if that'll ever happen i would love to hear a different voice on the oni when you play as minotaur and even a, a cute animation like i don't i don't care what it is if you want to give me this oh well i guess his tail is swishing i was going to say a swishing tail but it is swishing but i'd love to see like the minotaur like draw the hoof in the sand like ready to charge i think that'd be cool just any little extras that they could give us for that for that value would be welcome and, and speaking of value people often ask me do i think that the legendary skins are worth it and that that's something that everybody has to decide for themselves it's a case-by-case -case basis everybody is at a different point in their um, lives financially so i can't make that determination for you any more than i can say whether ray-ban sunglasses or jimmy choo shoes are worth it for you you know it just depends on your station in life and what value you feel like you are going to get out of uh the price of these skins now um i will say that you know the the thing that i do like about these legendary skins is that i'm able to get an entirely separate character and i don't have to worry about the grind grinding another survivor or grinding another killer and getting them all the perks just the ability to be able to lay this skin over an existing character that i've already done some grinding on to get them their perks and levels and things like that that is what has value for me and i'm personally am willing to pay a premium for that just to avoid that grind you may not feel similarly. I'm willing to pay that um, the premium price to get that ability, and I do have this allotment given to me. So I'm in a you know a a, a, a quite unique situation because I do get the allotment of Org Cell. So technically, I'm not reaching into my pocket for this. I will say, however, that if I wasn't partnered with Dead by Daylight and I didn't get that allotment of Org Cells, I would still be buying. Um, these legendary skins but again this is all just a personal choice for uh, you and you have to decide what's right for you now the cost do i uh i think it is you know it, it is definitely a premium there's no doubt about that which is why i have pushed and you've heard me probably talk about it in several videos that i do believe that they should be doing whatever they can to give us value for this premium price and I've often said that I would love to see all the characters get their unique voices. I don't want to have Jonathan Byer sound like Steve. I don't want everybody to have recycled voices. And hopefully Dead by Daylight feels similarly because if they don't, this kind of paints them in the corner where there's going to be characters that they can't really ever do. Like you can't reskin Steve Harrington as Hopper and then have Hopper use Steve's voice, right? So. I would love to see them all come in with unique voice lines, even perhaps unique lobby idle animations. Um, we'll see where that goes. Hopefully that's something that's on their drawing board to do because as I said, that would bring extra value for those um, premium legendary skin prices. Okay, so now we're gonna go back to talk about the Resident Evil legendaries. 
Okay, so I don't know how much of the PTB, the public test build play you have seen, but there are instances where Nemesis would say stars when uh, he was in the game and whenever he pulled Jill out of a locker or morried her, he would celebrate with his stars line. So there may even be more interactions than that. I heard a rumor from the data miners that perhaps if you're playing Nemesis, when someone loads into your game as a member of stars, then Nemesis will say stars on your screen, which would be pretty cool. We'll see if that is something that's true or not. Um, but one of the things that the data miners came up with was that when there was a legendary survivor um, skin for Leon added to the game, that one was also programmed to trigger the stars sound with Nemesis. So that immediately made everybody think, well, that's going to be Chris Redfield, obviously. And then that made everyone speculate that the other legendary cosmetic would be Claire. And it seems like that is very true um, because we had a little bit of a leak. So <laughs> the, the Steel series is partnered with Dead by Daylight and they're going to do a giveaway. And they jumped the gun a little bit and they put out a blog post yesterday on games.steelseries.com Dead by Daylight Steam Game Key Limited Giveaway, which has been taken down. But it did read, it says, available via the in-game store, Chris and Claire Redfield. The Resident Evil collection available via the in-game store includes two legendary sets for Leon and Jill that bring Chris and Claire Redfield into the fog. So you remember how we talked about how they would have those additional DLCs that we didn't know what they were. And I proposed that one of them was going to be a bundle that included the game and the chapter and uh, some legendaries like they did with Silent Hill. It looks like they are going forward with that with this Rev Resident Evil collection DLC that's going to have Chris and Claire combined into it. And so then it just says, from the ravaged streets of Raccoon City to the black fog of the entity's realm, the hunt is on. So that basically confirms through one of Dead by Daylight's partners with a whoopsie that, um, yeah, Chris and Claire Redfield are going to be the legendary skins. There are going to be extra cosmetics for Leon and Jill as well, I believe, on launch day. We hadn't seen any of that in the PTB, but that is typically um, not uncommon. Usually when you play the PTB, you just see the default outfits for the characters and then once there's full release then they add more cosmetics to the shop i don't think they're going to be a lot of extra outfits for um leon and jill but i do think there are going to be a couple according to the data miners remember data and data miner information is not official and tomorrow you might be like wait a minute paulie said this and be like well that, that wasn't official information so it was just a we think we think maybe i hope you know kind of thing so we'll see what happens with that and one person also pointed out when they looked deep into the PTB that the head cut piece for Leon um, seemed more appropriate as a descriptor for Chris. And uh, the head piece for Leon was described as seeking those responsible for the destruction of Raccoon City. He traveled to Europe to find the Umbrella Corporation's headquarters. So people said that this is... Um, the description for Chris Redfield in the uh, Code Veronica version of Resident Evil. So people now believe that that is the outfit that we're going to get for um, Chris Redfield. So probably Chris and Claire are going to look like this. I don't know. That's what I think is going to happen. But we won't have long to wait. And I can't wait to grab it and uh, share all of this Resident Evil experience with you. I will be playing the game as soon as possible. I have to get my download, obviously, at 11, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time in Montreal. Ask Siri and Google what time it is for you when it's 11 a.m. in Montreal so that you'll know when your time zone will get that content. And remember, you always have to wait an extra hour after the content goes live at 11 a.m. You have to wait until noon before you can buy the whole DLC on your platform shop and the reason why you want to wait is because if you buy the whole dlc well it's going to be cheaper than buying all three characters individually with oryx cells in the in-game shop um presumably it will be cheaper to buy 
the whole DLC. No pricing information given yet that I'm aware of. But the cherry on top of buying the whole DLC, assuming you save money with the whole purchase, is that you get that Umbrella Corporation charm. And you don't want to miss out on that. I mean, maybe you do want to miss out on that. Maybe you just want to play as Jill and you don't care about the rest and it isn't worth the money for you. But I would hate to see anyone buy everything twice. Like buy all three characters with Oryx Cells and then go, man, I missed out on the... Uh, on the Umbrella Corporation charm and then face having to buy the DLC all over again just to get that charm. So I want to make sure you have the best information if you do care about that charm um, to exercise that patience for that hour before you buy the DLC to get your charm. All right, that's all I have talked on long enough. We'll see you tomorrow on the live stream for uh, the chapter reveal. Can't wait. Thanks so much for watching, as always. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell like a wraith, and make sure you take care of each other in and out of the fog. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. It's a Gen Rush life for us. It's a Gen Rush life for us. Set a hiding, we do gens. Set our randoms, we got friends. It's a Gen Rush life. Stars! Oh, he said stars when he pulled me out of the locker! I didn't know he did that!